Okay. All right. So I will get started now. So first off, I'm curious about your family background. Um, are your are your parents artists, or how did you get interested in art? Um, so that's that's interesting. I grew up. Uh, in a family that was not horribly artistically inclined. I do have some artistic family like uh, in more different ways. So my, my uncle is a professor of theater and I have like, uh, you know, just ambiently artistic and creative family, but uh, I didn't really grow up in an art household. I never really had that much. Um, uh, I, I did not experience, uh, you know, historical arts or recent art that was made by, you know, uh, professional artists until I was much older. So I, I I got interested in art because I think I was an only child and I had to pass a lot of time. And so I would draw quite frequently in recess. And I think that um, I know, it, was, it was a good way for me to occupy myself and, um, you know, express myself uh, when I was younger. I didn't, though, though I, I guess when I was later in high school, I became very interested in uh, you know, like films and uh, art externally as made by other people. So, yeah. Who would you say are your biggest inspirations in the art world? It's a really good question. I think that my biggest inspirations, um, uh, I mean, my, my favorite artists, I would say are like, you know, Renee Magritte, I really like Alex Katz, uh, uh, contemporarily like, yeah, Alex Katz, Chloe Wise, also um, uh, Shannon Long, she's also really good. And um, uh, I think that maybe I derive my inspiration more from filmmakers rather than I do artists. So I think that, that what really got me going originally was uh, like my love of watching movies. Um, and so now I think that maybe I'm driven to, you know, do like snapshots of, uh, something movie-esque just in, in painting form. So uh, my, my favorite directors are definitely like Claire Denise and Christoph Kieslowski. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think, I, I, I think those, are, those, are, those are definitely my, my greatest inspiration. And moving on to a bit more about your personal work and how you kind of um, get inspiration for what you do, I was wondering, what are some, um, I'm sorry, could you briefly describe the starting process of a new work and I guess how you find um, a specific inspiration to start? Yeah, of course. I, it, it really depends. I think sometimes uh, it will come organically, like I will be out with some friends and I will, I will see something and I will say, oh, okay, like, uh, you know, stop, I need to take this, take this photo, like a recent painting that I did uh, that has like a fish head and it was when my friends and I were fishing and I, I saw his hands just kind of like sitting a certain way and so I had to like yell to like stop and make sure that he like posed uh, posed correctly for me and uh, yeah I, 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 uh, I'm glad because I think it turned out to be a really good one um, sometimes I, I try to um, I think most commonly I try to just sit still for some period of time and let something come to me. And then, you know, after doing that, uh, you know, so many times I'll have some, some sort of good idea of what, what I want to do. I think that, um, I, 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 that's what I love about art definitely is, is, um, is trying to discover new things just like within yourself and by looking at the world around you. So, um, I, I think those are the two biggest, um, yeah, that, that's that's definitely how I uh, that's definitely how I get my work started. That's how I get the ideas, um, and and then um, and then I just go ahead and, and paint it. Yeah, it's great. And if you have a creative block or if you um, can't find inspiration for some reason or another, how do you work through that? So I usually um, when it comes to creative block, if, if it's if it's to come up with. Uh, ideas that I think are compelling that is much more difficult than say like a block of just like actually doing it uh, in order to like uh, create a block I would say um, it's really hard because uh, you know I, I I feel like if I try to force something it's not you know it's, it's often not the best so if I'm having a creative dot block I usually uh, just take a little bit of time off from from painting and just try to 
go out and experience life and then and then eventually something will come to me or i'll have a general idea of, of okay here is here are the you know here's the art that i want to make in the, the next coming months or something yeah. And are there any lessons or messages that you want your art to convey to um, whoever is looking at it? Uh, I, I don't think that I, I, I want to personally uh, try to convey like lessons or, or any sort of like uh, explicit information or anything to be learned. I think that, for, yeah, for me, uh, I try to use visual art to um, Hopefully, you know, I'm, maybe if I'm, I, I can't tell if I'm fully succeeding, but I hope to, my, my full intention is to make art that will compensate for the, you know, for the limitations of language. I, I, would, I want to make things that uh, are not well described because I think that those uh, often uh, describe life itself the best, um, or the I, those are the paintings that, that I find most compelling. And therefore, yeah, that's how I, that's, that's what I create. In, in return, yeah. What are some common mistakes you would say that people that are just beginning to paint often make that they should avoid? I think uh, just um, not uh, experimenting enough, not trying out um, many methods or different approaches or even different uh, you know, like different modes of art. Because I, I think that, that uh, as, um, yeah, when I was starting to, to make things uh, in college, I really, uh, I, I didn't uh, try to um, just like cultivate my sense of myself and like what, uh, you know, what um, I am presenting in my art. But I think that that's kind of the whole key because you want to be, you, you want things to be unmistakably yours. So by, um, by making art in various forms, if you, you know, make a stop motion film or paint or draw or just simply you know take videos of the world around you then uh if you, if you have all that in front of you then you can see okay like this is this is what i am because there will be consistencies between them and then and then i think uh from there you'll get a better sense of what your purpose is with it like what your intentions are and um because i I think, uh, uh, I mean, you don't need to have an intention, but I think the best art has some sort of intention. Yeah. Um, and I was also, we were also wondering, do you have any tips for how an artist can network in the art world? Um, for networking, that's, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a, it's probably one of the toughest parts, but I, but therefore I think it's, it's probably one of the most useful things to hear you know, advice about. And uh, I, I'm still, you know, early career artist, but uh, my recommendation is um, as long as you feel very comfortable with and very confident in what you're making, then the, uh, the worst case scenario is that you end up in the same position that you were before. So there, it, it doesn't hurt. I mean, people are always getting, yeah, getting things sent to them. Um, and I think a lot of uh, people make a lot of mistakes in uh, just everything that they make, just sending that out, just sending out anything and everything. Um, and if, if you feel really that good about it, then that's fine. But uh, really only try to um, network and uh, present your art to people if you feel confident in it. Um, and also related to the, to the networking is, I think it's always keep in mind that um, in order to fight imposter syndrome, so feeling like you're an imposter, you, you don't belong there. Just remember that, uh, I mean, everyone is an imposter to some degree. It's um, you know, the world is, I forget what quote it is, but yeah, the world is run by people who are no, no smarter than you. So there's, uh, it's it's a hard barrier to get over, but I think that um, in due time, it's it, it will become natural, yeah. Um, is there anything, uh, are there any other tips you would like to share or any lessons that you personally learned that you think um, might be relevant for other people that are aspiring to be painters? I think that um, the biggest thing is to, or at least the biggest thing for, for myself uh, is that uh, creating art is really just about living as vibrantly as you can and is, and is promoting a vibrant life. Um, a meaningful life to other people in the world around you. Um, so you can become a better artist, not by just spending all your time painting. It is, it's about 
going out and feeling things and, and experiencing the world and um, and that will come through in your art and I think that that will make uh, your art more meaningful. Um, other advice, I think that another very important piece of advice is um, that, uh, yeah, and so I think it's maybe, it's, it's said very frequently, I don't know if it's overstated or not, but uh, at the end of the day, what you need to do is to make art for yourself and no one else, um, because then, then that's how you're going to make the best art. And that is, um, that, that's all that matters really at the end of the day. So um, yeah, yeah, I, th I think that's, that's, that's my advice to any, any young career artist. Uh, don't, don't be too hard on yourself. That's all. Hi. Well, thank you so much for answering all of um, our questions. I really, again, we really appreciate um, the time that you took out of your schedule to do this for us. Yeah, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. This is, this is really fun.